All right, it's week seven here at Point Blank and I'm outside the Stag's Head Pub yet again because today is the open decks night. It's basically where all the student DJs can come and register their interests and if they get on, they get 15 minutes to show their stuff. Let's go and take a look. Trash there. I'm here with Nathan and he's one of the students that is running the event tonight here at Trapeze. Yep. What's the event called? It's called uh, Made in Detroit. Cool, So cool. it's kind of just based around where uh, Techno came from, which is kind of Detroit. And just let me get this straight. You guys are promoting an event, like a full-fledged event here. And it's actually an assignment? Yeah, this is actually part of our class for uh, music entrepreneurship. Wow. I've never heard of a university course where you actually have to run an event, a techno event nonetheless. And then we get to keep the profits as well. Wow, that's real music entrepreneurship. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> what a great class, I should do that next semester. And now it's time for Ableton 10 Tips with Thomas. Quick, Thomas, what's your favorite thing about Live 10? Capture, definitely, hands down. All right, so a quick explanation of what Capture is. Have you ever been jamming on Ableton Live and you're like, damn, I really like that melody that I just played, but you totally forgot to hit the record button? And on top of that, you've forgotten how you played your melody. Well, Capture's the feature for you. If you play anything on Live 10, it remembers it. So when you need that MIDI of what you just played, it's right there for you. For example, I'm just gonna start jamming away. sounds pretty cool. Let's go and capture that. So in order to capture, we just basically click this square button right here on the top near the transport controls and bam, look, we've got that there. Ableton Live automatically picks the part that's best and it will loop it and also change the BPM to what it thinks that you're playing at. And if we actually go and check the MIDI, it actually has all of the notes that I played since I last hit the capture button. And that's capture. All right, so I'm here with Nigel, and he's one of the DJ instructors here at Point Blank. How you going, man? I'm good. You saw? Yeah, good, good. Nice. So as you guys just saw, there was that open decks night out at the Stag's Head. So how long you guys uh, been running that for? Um, so about five to six years now. Cool, cool, yeah. cool. So does it always happen twice a semester? Recently, we opened it up to twice a term because there's a, a lot of students who wouldn't necessarily have got to, to play on the first one due, yeah, due, yeah. due, due to the limited time. Um, and it just gives everyone a chance to play over the course of the term. How many students are there actually that do DJ like in, the, in one term? Well, the class can hold up to 16 people and we tend to run anything from four to six classes per term. So that's quite that's, a lot. That's a lot. That's quite a lot. Tell me a little bit about this room. Like, it's a pretty impressive room that you it guys is, have it here. Is. Um, as you can see, it's sponsored by Pioneer. So uh, most of the, the Pioneer CDJs um, are here. We have we have the 2000s, uh, the 900. We have a few, a couple of um, 850s uh, over there. Um, the 2000 Nexus is is here. A bunch of controllers, as you can see here. Um, we have the DDJ RZ. We have the DDJ SZ. We have the DJ SX2. So you guys teach people not just USB, record box, you guys teach them Serato, Tractor, that kind of whole stuff? Thing. This, this was the complete DJ course. We take them right from the, from the foundations. We teach you all of that from the basics, get your, your beat matching skills up, basic music theory, and then we start to add the creative side like using loops, hot cues, acapella mixing, and some scratch techniques as well. Yeah. How many people can be mixing at one time in this room? 17. 17? 17. 17. That's, that's a big rave. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Alright, thanks for all that, Nigel. That was great. Thanks for coming through. Whoa! Hey, um, what's uh, another thing you like about Live 10? Drum bus. Drum bus is killer. The boom. The boom. Dial in the boom. Okay, so now we've got drum bus. Right here, I've got a bog standard 909 kick. Pretty wimpy sounding by today's standards. So let's just, you know, everyone knows what it sounds like. Chuck a drum bus on it. Already sounds a bit better because the drum bus automatically has a little bit of drive on it. Now if we pump the drive up, already sounds a bit more pumpier, a bit more dirty. We can also change the wave shaping to be a bit harder. Oh yeah, I like that. Let's just keep it a soft for now. Next up we've got crunch, which adds a little bit of distortion to the high end. 
And then uh, this is really cool, transients. So you can actually make your kick a bit more punchy. So if I pull it to the right, has a bit more punch, has a little more of that mid-end punch sound. But this is the coolest part by far. If you want an instant 808 kick, dial up the boom. So we went from this to this. All right, sound engineering time today. We've got another session musician in. He's a guitarist called Mike. Also got a cool YouTube channel and he's gonna help us out with our guitars. And because we're doing Wonderwall and Wonderwall has a lot of acoustic guitars in it, we're going last, so. <laughs> All right, so I'm here with Mike. He is the guitarist that helped us out recording Wonderwall, every guitarist's <laughs> favorite song, right? Today is gonna be the day. <laughs> gonna be the day. Uh, how many songs have you recorded this week? I've done 25 songs this week, so. Wow. Um, is that a new record? Um, it's gotta be up there. Yeah? It's gotta yeah, be up yeah. there, yeah. Certainly, you know, the finger's been working. <laughs> yeah, the brain's a bit fried, you oh, know. Oh, right. How much, how much preparation do you need to do with, uh, when it comes to this kind it of stuff? It varies. Sometimes I get, I mean, I usually get about a week ahead, uh, sometimes two weeks, but, you know, the classic, you get sent stuff and you're like, oh, I'll, put, I'll, I'll work it out. And then yeah, yeah. it's like, oh, I've got two days, you know, yeah, to yeah. work all the songs out. So, yeah, I mean, you, you get about a week or so, but then oh. sometimes, you know, not every, not every student's given songs to the mm -hmm. lecturer and that. Well, look, we made it easy for you with Wonderwall. I you mean, you did, you did. Yeah, man. So. <laughs> Why can't they all be like you? you know? <laughs> well, look, he's got a great YouTube channel. You guys to go and check out. What's the YouTube channel called? Uh, is it Mike Bradley official? We put Mike Bradley in YouTube, and you'll you'll find me. If you like guitar music, you'll probably will like it. Yeah. Thanks a lot, guys. Thank you. Oh, hi Thomas. Whoa, hey. One more, one more, one more live 10 feature, what do you like? Echo. Okay, sweet. All right, and finally we have Echo. Now, this is what my sample sounds like without Echo. If I chuck Echo on. And you're probably thinking, Ravine, this just sounds like you got simple delay on a bit of feedback. Well, you know, there's a lot more to that, as you can see. Look, you've even got a visual representation here of your echo. Now, right now, we've just got your bog standard features set up right now. You can see here, you can change the timing of it to, you know, half, quarter, all that kind of stuff. Just leave it at one eight for now. Next up, you've got your feedback, which is standard. Get a bit more feedback. You can actually go over a hundred. And then this will never, ever end. Oh my God, that's a bit loud. Another thing that's really cool is they can change input. It makes Echo think that the input is louder than it actually is. As a consequence, your Echo will be louder, so. Pretty cool. But what I really, really love about this is the reverb. You can actually reverb your Echo. So I've got it on post delay right now, so this is what it sounds like. Oh, I love that sound. You can set that to pre-delay, but what's really cool is you can reverb the feedback loop, so this is what it sounds like. Can you hear that really, really long tail? Man, that's, I, I love that sound. You can also stereo widen this as well. So I wanna make it super wide, this echo. Really cool. And then of course you've got your filter options. I mean, you can chuck that, make it a little bit more of a low par. Pretty cool. And then you've also got an LFO that you can chuck on it and you can put that on the delay, you can put it on the filter. If we put it on the filter, Really, really cool sounding effects that you can get there. You can even change it from stereo, which is just a standard kind of echo, to a ping pong, which is just like a ping pong delay. And it bounces it from left to right. But by far, what is really, really cool is that you can turn up the reverb to 100% and feedback loop it on the decay to 100% as well. Check this out. Anyways, thank you to Thomas for telling us about those cool new things on Ableton Live 10. Make sure you check out his website, elephant.co.za. A lot of cool free plugins, especially made for Ableton Live at that page, so go and check that out. And as usual, check out Point Blank's website for free online courses, free plugins, and free sample packs.
But anyways, thank you guys for tuning in. I've got to get back to do my assignments now because they are due next week and I'm kind of scared about that. So, yeah. See you, Jeremy, now.